The Panama Canal is one of the true great success stories of the ability of human beings to alter the earth for the benefit of human beings. The industrious effort to build this project was of monumental proportions. Originally a French idea that ran into the ground before the US acquisition of the project. It took 10 years to build at a cost of $10 billion in today's money. It took 100,000 men to oversee the project, of which around 30,000 perished. The canal is one of the true marvels of human engineering, stretching 51 miles to connect the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans. What if we were to tell you that there is evidence in the Egyptian region that looks uncanny to this project? Using Google Earth, we can see that there is a real possibility that there was a similar type of project in Egypt in the very distant past. So wait till you hear this. It is incredible to think that this may be true, that there was a canal that was even larger than the one we see at Panama thousands and thousands of years ago. But if you look closely at these anomalies, then it's hard not to suggest that this could have been an ancient waterway. If it was then the idea for the canal at Panama, which we credit the French with, even though they never oversaw the project, was taken from ancient planning from the lost civilization. The similarities are eerily uncanny. In fact, this looks like before and after pictures of the exact same area in question, but it's not. There are nearby areas that looks anomalous to being that of sunken and now submerged boats a huge docking section for massive boats, and a clear-cut channel that looks like a canal. It is crazy, guys. The area in question is located near Saqqara and appears to head inwards towards the desert from the River Nile. This information was sent to us by Esteban Ibarra, who states the following at these locations. According to Esteban, the findings correspond to an ancient structure once built on an old and now completely dry channel of the Nile that resembles a floating mechanism like the Panama Canal. The structure is so perfectly aligned that it looks modern. It seems to be an old complex system that works by rising the water level in order to send boats across other small channels in direction to the north where it reaches the Serapium of Saqqara and Giza. And to the east where there are another set of buildings, there are significantly a lot of structures in the area that seems to be part of a man-altered water channel. It's important to consider that new discoveries tell us that Egyptians did use complex channel systems to transport stones, and they even spent a lot of time and resources into building them. That is why this finding might give us a clue to several mysteries. It is not that far from the Suez Canal, and when you look at the scarring on the Earth from the satellite, then you can actually see how this would have linked up with such sites and possibly even the Great Necropolis. It is possible that this was the system used by the ancients to transport huge stone blocks across the region. It's no secret that there were boats found at the Giza Plateau, but we assume that such things were buried deliberately. But could it be possible that such things were actually stationed all across the region before a cataclysmic event buried them all across this area? We all know there was a flood. Could this cataclysmic event have buried a lot of these things? Could this region have actually once been a water system that allowed transportation across what is now the desert. It is astonishing to consider this, but it is even more astonishing that this could, in fact, be true. It seems obvious when we begin to consider such things, and there is no doubt we are beginning to wake up to the idea that there was a civilization on this earth that supersedes all other known civilizations. The evidence is all over the world. We see it in the similarities and building techniques between cultures that were separated by oceans 
and we see it in the ancient depictions. These civilizations, though separated by thousands of miles, all knew similar things regarding technology. They all had similar stories of a cataclysm, and they all tell of a place from which they came. They all came from somewhere, meaning they arrived at these locations after the ancient cataclysm. If you think this is impossible, well, it's not. Just look at the Suez Canal, the construction of this wonder, and the envisioning of such a project manifested from something that was conceived of before the modern era. The modern Suez Canal is only the most recent of several man-made waterways that once snaked their way across Egypt. The Egyptian pharaoh Sunroset III may have built an earlier canal connecting the Red Sea and the Nile River around 1850 BC, and according to ancient sources, the pharaoh Nico II and the Persian conqueror Darius both began and then abandoned work on a similar project. The canal was supposedly finished in the 3rd century BC during the Ptolemaic dynasty, and many historical figures, including Cleopatra, may have traveled on it. Rather than the direct link offered by the modern Suez Canal, this ancient canal of the pharaohs would have wound its way through the desert to the Nile River, which was then used to access the Mediterranean. After conquering Egypt in 1798, the French military commander Napoleon Bonaparte sent a team of surveyors to investigate the feasibility of cutting the Isthmus of Suez and building a canal from the Red Sea to the Mediterranean. But following four separate excursions to the region, his scouts incorrectly concluded that the Red Sea was at least 30 feet higher than the Mediterranean. Any attempt to create a canal, they warned, could result in catastrophic flooding across the Nile Delta. The surveyor's faulty calculations were enough to scare Napoleon away from the project, and plans for a canal stalled until 1847, when a team of researchers finally confirmed that there was no serious difference in altitude between the Mediterranean and Red Seas. As the Suez Canal neared completion in 1869, French sculptor Frédéric Augustus Bartholdi tried to convince Ferdinand de Lesseps and the Egyptian government to let him build a sculpture called Egypt Bringing Light to Asia at its Mediterranean entrance. Inspired by the ancient Colossus of Rhodes, Bartholdi envisioned a 90-foot tall statue of a woman clothed in Egyptian peasant robes and holding a massive torch, which would also serve as a lighthouse to guide ships into the canal. The project never materialized, but Bartholdi continued shopping the idea for his statue, and in 1886 he finally unveiled a completed version in New York Harbor, officially called Liberty Enlightening the World. The monument has since become better known as the Statue of Liberty. In 1956, the Suez Canal was at the center of a brief war between Egypt and the combined forces of Britain, France, and Israel. The conflict had its origin in Britain's military occupation of the Canal Zone, which had continued even after Egypt gained independence in 1922. Many Egyptians resented the lingering colonial influence and tensions finally boiled over in July 1956 when Egyptian President Gamal Abdel Nasser nationalized the Suez Canal, supposedly to help fund a dam across the Nile River. In what became known as the Suez Crisis, a combined British, Israeli, and French force launched an attack on Egypt in October 1956. The Europeans succeeded in advancing close to the canal, but later withdrew from Egypt in disgrace following condemnation from the United States and the threat of nuclear retaliation from the Soviet Union. British Prime Minister Anthony Eden resigned in the wake of the scandal, and the Suez Canal was left under Egyptian control. So there you have it guys, this place is obviously of major strategic importance. The new era and the ancient eras cross paths in these sorts of projects. Don't you think it's all connected somehow?
We know it sounds crazy, guys, but it might just be crazy enough to be true. So we'd be crazy not to consider this a possibility.